you know, he, he won't be elected and I don't want to waste my vote. You tell them, listen, jerk, if you'd actually vote for him, and then if all those people who said, well, I like what he says, but he's unelectable, would actually vote for him, he'd probably get elected. Well, that's that mind game. That, yeah. that we're going to say who you can vote for. Exactly. And I'll tell you what, and, I, and here's the whole thing. Everyone who's listening to this, you've got to take it on yourself. You can't, you, know, you can't just count on Alex to take care of everything. You can't count on me. You can't take, count on anybody. You can only count on yourself. And what do you do? You've got to wake your fellow citizens up. And I don't mean preaching to them because that's not going to do any good. But start asking them questions and just get them to thinking and just say, like, uh, you know, I mentioned, I think, in the last quarter, Say, say, wait a minute, if we're supposed to be so afraid of uh, this international terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda, that is trying to slip weapons of mass destruction into our country and is so evil, then how come they haven't done one solid thing to secure the border? Get them thinking about that. Wait a minute, well, why haven't they? And that's because, let me tell you, folks, this is where the New World Order has kind of tripped up themselves. They don't want a secure border. They want open borders so they can flood this country and dilute the population, get us all conflicted, fighting with each other, so that they can push through their agenda. That's the balkanization of minute plan. The balkanization of America, absolutely. So they don't want a secure border, and yet they want us all fearful of this international terrorist organization. So wait a minute, you can't have both. If the, if the ter terrorist organization is real, then we need to secure the border. And if it's not real, then we can talk about loosening up the border. But there's no discussion of that. We're supposed to believe in these two, you know, totally opposite themes. It's ridiculous. Get people to thinking and ask them about, well, what do you suppose brought down that third tower in New York on 9-11? And I guarantee you, 9 out of 10 of them are going to say, what, what tower? You say, well, the Solomon Brothers building. And they're going to say, what? And then you say, oh, well, you didn't know that another building fell down that afternoon. That's Just seven. search Building 7. Just go get on the Internet. Go search Building 7. Get them to think and start waking people Good up. Good points. More news, phone call straight ahead. Live from Dallas, Texas, here at the Lakewood Theater. I'm Alex Jones, and this is InfoWars.com. Jim Mars is our guest. Jim, you're a best-selling author many times over. Briefly, you weren't asking for a plug, but it's such, such great writing. Tell folks about a couple of your last books, uh, any new stuff you've got coming out, and tell us about the website before we go to phone calls. Okay. Um, well, for, for those of you who try to talk to your friends and or family and explain what's really going on today, and they go, well, what? How do you know that? Hey, we, I've never heard of that. You can't prove that. Get my book, The Trillion Dollar Conspiracy, a New York Times bestseller, and it tells you you what's wrong and why it's wrong and who's behind it, who's to blame, and what you can do about it. And it's fully documented so you can go to the websites, you can go to the books, and you can say, here's what's going on. Now, for the ones that really want to get advanced and find out, well, what's the big picture, what it's really all about, then I would suggest reading my book, Rule by Secrecy. Excellent book. There you go. And that will give you the whole nine The whole national security state. We've given the ultra-rich the power to operate in total secrecy with unlimited money. Of course they're running wild. Exactly. And if you want to pinpoint who... It'd be like if you left your house with a, four or five 11-year-olds <laughs> for a month with, with, with like, or, or teenagers with Jack Daniels and machine guns. <laughs> and tell them, don't get in the booze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you want to find out, really, if you want to really get horrified, then read my New York Times bestseller. The Rise of the Fourth Reich, because that will tell you that uh, how that, we, yes, we defeated the German military in World War II, and we defeated the German nation, but we didn't defeat the Nazis. In fact, at the uh, signing of the surrender papers, that was the German Wehrmacht, the army. The Nazis were not even represented there. They never gave up. In fact, the same international banksters that had bankrolled Hitler. The Bilderberg is Nazi. And, exactly. And created the Third Reich. They simply brought them all over here uh, with the help of the CIA. Paperclip. With a paperclip and several other programs. Thousands of them, okay? And rolled them into our military-industrial complex. To head programs from NASA to CIA. To mind control, to Everything. pharmaceuticals. Why do you think they're putting uh, fluoride in the drinking water? My son has a children's history book 
on the Nazis. In fact, I meant to bring her for the speech tonight. He was back in the hotel with my wife. God bless her. She's good. So I got she's sick or something tonight. I don't feel well. But uh, the point is, in there it says the Nazis would tell people. I got to look this up. I've never even seen this. But it was like a mainline big uh, scholastic book, the biggest publisher in the world. Yeah. They said the Nazis would give people shots saying it was a vaccine. It was really to kill them. Yeah. I'm like, what do you think's going on today? Did you know that about the Nazis? Oh, yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. Tell us briefly when we got a call. Right. Well, they had a program uh, that, where they were uh, targeting uh, in the German. It translated to uh, life not worth life <laughs> or not worth living. And they would go for people that they considered defective mentally, physically, whatever. And they would yeah, they'd inject them, tell them to give them medicine and didn't just kill them off. But that's what they're doing to us. Exactly. Except they, see, they, they learned this a children's book. I learn stuff every day. Well, they said they would say, we're giving you a vaccine and kill them. And of course, when they sent them to the camps and they'd tell them, strip off, we're going to put you in this little room and we're going to de-louse you. You know, and of course, they'd throw in the Cyclone B gas. You know, and, and see, you, you don't kill a lot of people at once by telling them we're going to kill you. And they, they're liable to fight back or something. So it's always for your good. This we're film, gonna I'm, gonna, you. this film gonna, I'm going to premiere tonight. I've been so busy. I just got finished a few days ago. I haven't thought up the right name yet for it to describe it. But it's all about democide, which is in the universities. You're a professor yourself, but that the public doesn't know about it. And democide is death by government. 260 plus million last century killed by government. Well, uh, you know, if you want to go back to the United States government and go back to the Native Americans and come forward to the Philippine insurrection and then it, it'd be even and just keep going, you know, yeah, we, you know, we've killed more people than uh, than uh, Hitler supposedly did. So uh, I don't know. It's it's really something. People just need to wake up and get to their senses. We're good people. The United States gives more to charity than all the other nations in the but world. But we're gullible. Put together, but we're gullible. And we're naive because we were the good guys we think we're perfect now yeah and it's just not the case uh let's go to phone calls you ready let's go to sean in arizona you're on the air with jim mars live in dallas texas thanks sean uh, thank you alex uh thank you uh mr mars thanks for everything you've done uh, over the past 50 years pertaining to the jfk conspiracy but what i have to say today is a comment on the flight um from amsterdam to detroit that uh, that uh that Mr. Hassel from Detroit was on. I, I've been on that flight, and I want to share to you a couple quick facts. First of all, I was over in Germany, and I was told by my German host that uh, when we flew into Amsterdam from, Bre uh, from Bremen, Germany, not to uh, fiddle around with the Dutch authorities. They had the second toughest airport security in the world behind the Israelis, and they did uh, racially profile uh, me and others um, uh, individually. It, it was really something to watch. And one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, consultations on a dais, and then, you, then, they, the, then they cut you loose. And what I witnessed, and this was in May, uh, Memorial Day weekend of 2003, we had an orange alert at the time. Uh, when I was cut loose from the one-to-one one -one, uh, uh, consultation with the Dutch authorities, I went around the corner and every Mideast uh, looking person, and that uh, meaning uh, Pakistanians, East Indians, uh, Sikhs with headdresses, uh, were, had all, were all being searched there. Everyone, there was no exception. Um, everybody, uh, even 80 year old women. Yeah, it was real security. No, no. They had naked body scanners at that airport and brought him through. He didn't even, the U.S. government got him the visa. He didn't have the other passport. And that's what Haskell saw was a guy with high enough authority at the gate, at the secondary check, to say, you will put him on. And then the government admits that was their guy that got him on. Oh, of course. But, but, uh, well, wait, wait, wait. I mean, I mean, is that the point you're getting at? No, wait, Sean, I want to ask you something because it does sound like that was a very stringent security checkpoint. Did they put their hand down your pants? This was no, no, uh, completely professional. I mean, completely. no, 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 no. Here, no. here, it's they about put the federal hand government your is your god. So we're going to have pot bellies grab your child's genitals. Uh, yeah. Every, here, it's about domination. Everyone who's listening, this. Put their hand down your pants. This has nothing to do with security. This has everything to do with making the public passive and accepting of just about anything. Yeah, exactly. But, sir, to finish your point, so so what is your point in the huge security you saw compared to what you just heard with Kurt Haskell with the U.S. government demanding they get this guy on the plane? 
Well, uh, the key is this, Alex, and you've already said it. And what the American, what the majority of our countrymen don't know, it was impo- it was it was impossible for any terrorist to get on the plane. Uh, uh, without cooperation from our people because the Dutch were so good that they would have never allowed. Uh, that's that's the whole point here, and I've known it for, for years, ever since it happened. It's on the record that after history. the Israelis, they've got the most, including naked body scanners. L- listen, the underwear bomber was brought past all the security. That was later confirmed. Well, Just like brought right past it all. Wait, wait, wait. I, I died, uh, two months, uh, one month after that, there were congressional hearings and there were people from the intelligence community who testified to Congress under sworn testimony that the uh, State Department was going to decline this guy a visa. They were ordered to let him in, yeah. And our intelligence services said no, let him off. See, see, you were driving in, you missed it. I had Haskell on. He said it a month and a half before it was in the news. He saw it happen. Yeah. And, and exactly. No, it was on C-SPAN. Yeah, no, they, listen, they run the... Look, they're giving al-Qaeda control of Libya and Syria now. And I mean, you, come on, man. If you go if you go back to TSA every, wants to grow my family, I can't fly, but because Al Qaeda, but they give them whole countries. And they right. And if you'll go back to every single terrorist big story from the Sears Tower in Chicago uh, all the way down. At the thick of it, at the middle of it, you always find some government informant or some government... Provocateur in the whole thing. The whole thing's a scam. It is. Great call. Thank you, Sean. We've got like 15 more callers here. We're going to come back and each caller one minute on the other side. Final segment, and then Jim's going to give a speech. And Jim's such a sweetheart, he's like, well, I don't want to give too much of a speech. I just want to introduce you. Jim, I'm a fan of you. I want to hear you speak. I want to sit in there with some popcorn. (laughs) We are back live here. We're talking about uh, gardening boxes. What is the system you're talking about? I, I need to get one. Yeah, it's a little. You grow your own herbs. You just got a little grow light. You grow. No, wait a minute. They're they're yeah. shutting down the Amish and shutting down people with the uh, lemonade stands. I don't know if you can be trusted with a garden because you know they're starting to restrict them. Oh, well, you have to have true. inspections to make sure there's not drugs because you're true. guilty until proven innocent. That's true. Maybe I better not put any mint in the mint juleps I serve to people. Oh yeah, don't do that. It hasn't been government approved. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's race through your calls here. Jeff in Canada, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, I just had uh, a quick question for Jim. I'm, uh, you guys, it's funny you brought up uh, the, your books. I'm just uh, racing through the end of The Rise of the Fourth Reich, and I wondered if uh, Jim could go over on page 207. He talks about Otto Scorsese, uh, the Nazis, the Egyptian Gestapo, uh, which is known as the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, how it ties to the CIA director, Alan Dulles, Richard Gellin, um, and uh, how... Oh, yeah, no, no, the, they uh, run... Well, listen, the Nazis, British intel, our government, they run all the Muslim extremists. Go ahead. Exactly. And that's because they took them over at the end of World War II because prior to them, the Muslim Brotherhood had been a Nazi-run organization. So, you know, now we got not only fanatical Muslims, but... Well, uh, the Grand hard, Imam hard, hard, hard was, that one was an actual Nazi. Oh, yeah, and, and a big fan of Adolf Hitler. In uh, fact, uh, you know, I had an uncle that served in the army in North Africa and uh, he said they had as much trouble with the Muslim Brotherhood as they did with the Nazis. I mean, they were fighting us over there, too. See, nobody gets told about the truth of history. We just get these little sound bites. And but they're the good guys. They're putting them in charge now. Oh, yeah. The TSA goes in your pants because they need to put them in charge. That's right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Making us safe. Safe. Wait a minute. Come on, folks. Freedom has never been safe, clean, All right, great. Right, well, quick 30-second comeback, Jeff. Well, I just wanted to say, if anybody hasn't read Rise of the Fourth Reich, every page is a jaw-dropper, uh, recommended reading to know what, what's really going on. I mean, it's just an incredible work of art. Well, and, thank and, you very much. And, and unfortunately, I've read so many mainline history books where pieces of it are read. I know your book's accurate. Right. That's uh, just incredible. Uh, let's go ahead and go to another call here. Let's talk to Brad in Pennsylvania. You're on the air, Brad. Hey, Alex, thanks a lot. Jim, uh, you guys are just awesome. It's it's nice to hear you both together. Thank you. Uh, 
I think you should get, get him on the show more often, Alex, because I know you have fun with him. And I'd, lo- I'd love to hear you with your dad on there again on the show because that was a great interplay. Your dad's um, – Well, he looks down. just like him. I can think it'd be his body double. <laughs> Maybe he's back. Yeah. Actually, Jim is my dad. Let's start a new conspiracy theory. We're, we're, me and his dad are going to hire out his bookends. <laughs> Sorry, hey, great. Go good luck tonight with the show. And I'm, uh, I'm a Prison Planet TV member. I love the 